So in this video, I'll be doing an unboxing, setup, demo, and review of the Trezor Safe 3. In terms of Trezor's lineup, the Safe 3 is kind of like a refresh of the Trezor 1. The Trezor 1 is still available and supported, but how long it stays that way, who knows. I bought this one myself, no freebies here, let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. All right, so this is how it comes. Let's open it up. All right, so this is everything that comes in the box. Basically, we've got a getting started guide. We've got two recovery seed sheets, which have room for a 12 word seed with some info about the pin name uh, and some warnings on there. It's also got some stickers, a USB-C to USB-C cable. And then we have the Trezor Safe 3 itself. So basically the device itself just comes with a sort of sticker over the bottom and a protective sort of cover. So we'll just peel that off. Ah, uh, there we go. So there's the device under there. Peel this sticker off down here as well. There we go. That comes off there. And there we go. So that is the device. And if we can just compare this to the previous Trezor, so we've got the Trezor 1, Trezor T, and the Trezor Safe 3, you can see that it's pretty much going for the same size and shape as the Trezor 1. All right, so let's get this going. Now, the one thing with Trezor is that you do need to connect this to a computer to set it up. So the first thing we'll have to do is download and install Trezor Suite. Okay, so if we just head to trezor.io start, we can do two things. We can do this in the web or we can actually just download Trezor Suite on our desktop. And the quick thing I mentioned about Trezor Suite for web is it actually also works on Android mobiles. I'll show you how that works a bit later, but for now we'll just stick with desktop. Okay, so we'll just say download for desktop and I'll just say save. Once that download has finished, we will just install it and we can just stick with the defaults. Here we go and we'll say run Trezor Suite. Okay, so it says connect your Trezor, so we will just do that. There we go. Device security check. So we can check those things. Hologram was intact, device was brought through official and the package was untampered with. So we'll just say set up my Trezor. These don't come with any firmware on them, so we need to install the firmware as the first step. We'll just stick with the universal firmware, but if you do want to go Bitcoin only, you can use the Bitcoin only firmware. There we go, so you continue. Now it's going to run a genuine check, which is nice. So, authenticate device, allow connected computer to confirm your Trezor Safe 3 is genuine. Okay. Congrats, your Trezor Safe 3 is ready to go. Continue. Okay, so it's actually got some instructions on here, tutorial. So welcome to the Trezor, press right to continue. By clicking left and right buttons, continue right. So it's got the arrows on either side. Hold to confirm. Yep. And screen scroll. Press the right button when it doesn't fit. And then when left to scroll up. Continue. Press both buttons at the same time to confirm. Tutorial complete. Now you're ready to use your Trezor. We'll say continue. Nice. Continue. We'll just say create new wallet. And the great thing here is that this device actually supports both standard BIP39 seeds and SLIP39. Previously SLIP39 was only available on the Trezor T device, not the Trezor 1. So that's a nice improvement. But we'll just say standard seed backup. Choose how to back up your Trezor. This process will create a standard wallet for you. Okay, so by continuing to agree to Trezor's terms and conditions, we have to accept those. Create wallet. Processing. Okay, backup needed. This is just like previous Trezor devices in that you can actually skip the backup if you like, but that is a really, really, really bad idea. Running without a backup is an extremely unsafe and a very easy way to lose all your funds. Do not send any funds to the wallet until you have created the backup. Okay, so we will say create backup and it gives us some helpful warnings there, which are excellent. And we'll say begin backup. Okay, so now basically the backup is gonna happen on this Trezor. We confirm, we'll say show words. All right, we have our C words now. We get one of our recovery sheets and we write it down. Now, despite the fact these words here are all lowercase, they aren't actually case sensitive. So you can write them down in upper or lowercase, whatever you think is gonna be the easiest to read. Okay. Basically, so I wrote down all 12 words, check backup. Let's see how many words we're gonna check. 
Yikes. Only checking three words, that is no good. So continue. Backup is done, keep it safe. Continue. So we'll take this and put it to the side for the moment. Now we're going to set a pin, and we'll say set pin. Turn on pin protection, we'll say turn on. Pins should be four to 50 digits long, yep. Continue. All right, so this is how we select the pin. So look, I'll just do one, two, three, four. Say enter, check pin, we're going to re-enter it. There we go. Success, pin protection turned on. Pin is set, so we are now ready to go. We'll just stick with the defaults and say complete setup, setup complete. There we go, we can also give the device a name if we want. And we can also change the home screen if we want to. Just like with the Trezor one. But we'll just leave it as the default for now. Access suite. Okay, now in terms of the choice between a standard wallet or a hidden wallet, previous Trezor devices like the Trezor One or Trezor T did not have a secure element, so their physical security was not as good as something like a ledger. So they encourage you to use a BIP39 passphrase to add an extra layer of protection in case someone was able to extract the keys from your Trezor. Given that the Trezor Safe 3 actually has a secure element now, you know, adding a passphrase is not actually necessary for the same reasons as with the previous Trezors. You may still want a passphrase to help secure your seed backups in case someone finds your seed, but the important the important thing to say is that adding a passphrase enabling hidden wallet is an advanced feature. So if you do enable passphrase, you must keep a copy of your passphrase written down somewhere as well. It is part of your backups and you will only be able to access your funds if you have the correct seed and the correct passphrase to be able to access your wallet. There's nothing wrong with using a standard wallet and that's what we're using for this demo. So we'll just say standard wallet and there are all our accounts. So if I wanted to receive Bitcoin on this device, basically in Trezor Suite, I just click on Bitcoin here. I just say receive BTC and I can click here to say show full address. There we go. So I get a QR code on my screen and you'll notice I get my address over here that I can also confirm matches what is on the screen. So I'll just send some Bitcoin there and I will just confirm this address over here as well. Those funds are on their way. There we go, so that transaction is now pending, which is great, and if we wait a little while, that will confirm. So if we go up here and say send, I'll just put in my tip address. Now, I'll just send it back to my tip wallet. Now, in terms of fees, I'm actually just gonna set the fee rate to low, because you'll notice here, this option here that says RBF equals on, and the great thing about Trezor Suite is by default, it turns RBF, which is called replace by fee, on and I actually talk about RBF in this video here. Uh, but what it means is if we broadcast a transaction where the fees are too low, it's easy for us to come back later to increase the fee on that transaction to get it to confirm faster. So I'm just gonna say review and send. So basically I confirm that that is the address that I want. So yep, confirm the amount, yep. And essentially it gives us the amount and the fee and we'll say confirm. There we go. So now here in Trezor Suite, I can just say send. And there we go. If we click into the little cog here in the top right corner, we can go into settings. In terms of the settings, we've got all our localization stuff. In terms of labeling, we can turn on device labeling. So I'll just say confirm. And uh, basically at the moment, it's just saving the labels locally onto our machine. Basically what that means is we can go out to somewhere like accounts we can like rename our accounts. So like that, and that'll just save it on the machine. It's useful if you have, you know, multiple accounts of the same coin and want to keep them all organized and separate by giving them different names. If you want, you can also enable routing through Tor, which essentially will keep your traffic private from your network administrator and your ISP and folk like that. You can also change the application to, you know, light mode, dark mode, and so on. If at any time you're stuck, you'll also notice there's a little light bulb in the bottom corner. If you click on that, it actually opens up uh, their documentation, which is extremely useful. If we go onto device, we can see information about our backups. So this actually used to be called recovery check. Now it's called check backup. So let's just go into there because I'm curious to see how this device actually makes you do that. 
Now this check backup function is really powerful and there's a way that you can securely verify that your seed phrase matches what is on the device itself. And it's especially important to do, I think if you're just starting out with a Trezor Safe 3, given that it only verified three of the 12 words of a recovery seed. And given how weak the checksum is on a 12 word seed versus a 24 word, I would really encourage you to do this backup check as part of your device setup, as well as doing it again on any copies of the seed you might make. If you copy it to something like Steve, uh, or make any other copies of the seed, you should really run the backup check and check that they are correct before storing them long term. So I'm curious to see how this does it. So basically we're going to use the two button pad to enter the recovery seed. We're going to enter the words in the correct order and this is important. This doesn't actually affect our device. It's a safe and secure thing to do. So we'll say check backup. Yes. Enter pin. Okay, so our backup has 12 words. Continue. Right, so we're entering all the words just on the Trezor itself. All right, so we can see here it says the entered recovery seed is valid and matches the one on the device, which is great. If we scroll down to security, basically we can do things like turn off the pin or change the pin. We can disable passphrase if we don't plan on using it. This safety checks feature is actually useful if we've done something like send funds to an address but on the wrong chain, uh, we might need to actually turn safety checks onto prompt to allow us to recover those funds, but we'll just leave that on strict for now. Uh, and you can also check the device genuineness. We can also do the customization things before, like changing the name, changing the home screen, changing the lock time. And then finally, we've got things like factory reset, custom firmware, and so on. We can also just enable and disable different coins, and that's pretty much it as far as the settings go. The other great thing about the Trezor Save 3 is it actually also supports FIDO 2. So it can be used as a hardware second factor for a variety of things. And I'm actually just at a Yubico test site to demonstrate what this looks like on the device. So in Windows, I'll just say use another device. Use security key, next. Security key setup, we'll say okay. We'll say okay. Here we go, touch your security key. So basically here it's prompting us to register FIDO2, demo.ubico.com. So we'll say confirm. We'll enter our pin. There we go. Pass key saved. So we can now use the security key to sign into ubico.com. So now we'll just test what the authentication looks like. I'll just say security key next. There we go. So FIDO2 authenticate. So we will confirm yes. And there we go. Authentication successful. Actually, now the last thing I'll show you is just how to use this with a phone. So we're just going to unplug that from our PC. So we're just going to grab the USB-C to USB-C cable that came with it. We will just plug one end straight into the bottom of the phone. And we'll stick the other end into the Trezor. And there we go. Let's try on Brave. Okay, so basically it just says click to connect. So I'll just enter my pin over here. So we won't open in green. Let's see. Allow Brave to access Trezor, yes. Ah, there we go. Okay. So that has worked. You've connected a safe three. Have you used this Trezor before? We'll say yes, continue. Make sure that your Trezor device is legit, yes. Checking your device, yep. Continue. And there we go, so we'll choose standard wallet. Basically here we've got the same view that we had in Trezor Suite before, obviously just a bit smaller for mobile. And we can see these transactions we made down here before. Finally, if we head over to the Trezor GitHub and go into the Trezor firmware, uh, we can get the repository that contains the firmware for all of the Trezor devices. And the useful thing about that is if you've got questions or concerns about, for example, the secure element that they're using and how they're using it, you can actually just search for, you know, Optiga, which is the type of secure element that they have in here and basically just have a bit of a read to satisfy yourself that the secure element on the Safe 3 is doing what Trezor are saying it's doing. If you wanted to dig deeper, the other great thing that you can do is just click through to the documentation because uh, one of the great things about all of Trezor stuff is it's really, really well documented so you can understand exactly how it all works. You can build on it uh, and also do things like, you know, have reproducible builds if you want to verify, for example, that the firmware that is coming out uh, is what you would expect it to be. The other great thing about Trezor is that unlike things like Cold Card, it is actually distributed under an open source license, meaning that you are free to build on it as well. 
Alright, summary time. So the Trezor Safe 3 is a massive improvement over the original Trezor 1. It's so much of an improvement actually that I honestly think it is hard to justify spending the extra on a Trezor T. Unlike the Trezor 1, the Safe 3 fully supports entering both seed and passphrase on the device itself. Its physical security is a massive improvement, now having a secure element, while continuing to build on their tested and proven platform, both in terms of the firmware running on the device as well as Trezor Suite. Just like all the other Trezor devices, the Safe 3 can also be securely used with a wide range of third-party wallet software. You know, a huge range of open source Bitcoin wallets, works with things like Exodus, as well as uh, Ethereum-based stuff for things like Metamask and so on. And if you're running the universal firmware, it also allows you to boost security of your other online accounts by using it as a hardware second factor. I've also gone and added it onto my hardware wallet comparison website. And you can actually see that it does very well, uh, especially compared to the previous Trezor models. And it even does better than the Ledger Nano X. And if you want to see specifically where these scores come from, uh, you can click through to the spreadsheet for a detailed breakdown feature by feature. If you think the Trezor Safe 3 would help boost the security of your setup and want to help me out in the process, I've got an affiliate link in the description. Otherwise, if you've got any questions about the device or any experiences you'd like to share, just leave a reply in the comments. I do my best to answer all of them. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.